Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Danny Issa. I am an interventional endoscopist at UCLA, and today I'll be talking about endoscopic interventions for weight loss, current and emerging therapies. I have no financial disclosures related to this presentation. Whenever I see a patient with extra weight or obesity, I talk to them about weight loss as being a process or a journey rather than a one-step, one-solution therapy. Luckily, myriad treatments are available for weight loss. Diet and exercise are the least expensive, least invasive, but they're also the least successful treatment. Several medications are available and FDA approved. However, they come with modest benefit, around 3 to 7% total body weight loss. Surgery remains the most effective treatment, but not every patient qualifies or chooses surgery. And endoscopic interventions are now available and can certainly help fill in the gap for the treatment of obesity, and we will talk about them today. Three main types of procedure of surgeries can be done for, for weight loss. Adjustable gastric band is not com commonly done anymore nowadays. Roux-en-Y remains the most effective surgery, and sleeve gastrectomy is the most rapidly growing surgery in the United States. There are different mechanisms how, on how surgery uh, can induce weight loss, but the two most proposed, uh, commonly proposed mechanisms are malabsorptive and uh, restrictive effects induced by the surgery. Although surgery is very effective, it comes with challenges. It is a significant surgery that comes with potential risk for complications and morbidity. Mortality is not negligible, and it's about 0.1% in experienced hands. Several patients will require re-intervention, and several patients regain weight after surgery for a number of reasons. If we look at the United States population, at least 90 million patients uh, would qualify for surgery. However, only 2% of patients actually choose surgery. And to try to answer this question, one study looked at over 280 patients who would qualify for surgery but not choose it. And most patients reported fear of complications or fear of dying or fear of the surgery itself. And also some patients were worried about cost, pain, and other reasons. Therefore, there is a significant gap between pharmacotherapy, diet, lifestyle on one hand, and bariatric surgery on the other hand. And that's why endoscopic approach is attractive for weight loss, because this approach is minimally invasive, it's relatively cheap, can be done as an outpatient. Most procedures, we send patients home at the same day or, af or after a short uh, observation overnight. Uh, it is repeatable and reversible and can help fill in this unmet need uh, for the treatment of uh, obesity. Endoscopic interventions can be broadly divided into two main categories, gastric remodeling procedures and small bowel interventions. So let's start with gastric procedures. ESG or endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty is probably the most promising procedure for weight loss that we perform nowadays. It is a novel, incisionless, minimally invasive procedure that was developed as a non-surgical alternative for the management of obesity. It incorporates taking full thickness applications to reduce the stomach volume by approximately 75 to 80%. The development of this procedure started many years ago, but the initial uh, attempts were unsuccessful for a number of reasons. The, probably the main one was the lack of full thickness sutures. Until eventually, about 2015-2016, uh, uh, the procedure uh, at its current version or form arrived. This was made possible by the introduction of uh, new endoscopic tools and techniques, mainly the uh, overstitch uh, and other devices that we can use for endoscopic suturing that allow us to take full thickness applications of the stomach so the sutures will last longer. There are different ways to and patterns to uh, do the suturing during ESG, but most of us start at the anterior wall of the stomach, and then we go to the greater curvature, the posterior wall, and repeat the process in a U pattern, N pattern, or Z pattern, approximately six bytes per suture, and then we do it again and again. So conceptually, the ESG mimics surgical gastrectomy with an end result of reduction of the gastric volume and restrictive effect. So how effective is endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty? Initial studies showed that ESG leads to a reduction in total body weight by 15 to 20% at six months and 12 months. Multi-center and international studies showed similar results uh, with approximately 40 to 60% excessive weight loss. More recently, a five-year outcome study from uh, New York Dr. Sharia's group looked at a cohort of 216 patients and showed that most patients uh, maintained weight loss after five years, and uh, the mean total body weight loss was 15.9%. 
Another recent study looked at uh, the effect of ESG at uh, different classes of obesity. 396 patients were included in this uh, study from Spain. 146 of those patients had class three obesity, which means BMI over 40. And ESG was effective in all classes of obesity. But more importantly, more than 50% of patients with a BMI over 40 lost more than 20% of their total body weight at one year. An important question is how does ESG compare to other therapies? Therapies. And this study looked at ESG versus high intensity diet. And after 12 months, more patients in the ESG group maintained weight loss compared to high intensity diet. Now, how does it compare to surgical sleeve? There's no head to head uh, studies available currently, but this uh, paper from Hopkins looked at 54 patients who underwent ESG uh, matched with 83 patients who underwent surgical sleeve. And they found that the surgical sleeve leads to more weight loss, about 23, 24% compared to 17% for the endoscopic sleeve. However, the rate of adverse event was lower in the endoscopic sleeve, 5% compared to 6% for the surgical sleeve including the incidence of uh, acid reflux uh, or GERD after the procedure. A recent meta-analysis published last month looked at 16 studies, uh, more than 2,000 patients who underwent either ESG or laparoscopic sleeve, and they found that um, ex the excessive weight loss was approximately 80% for the surgical sleeve compared to 62% for the endoscopic sleeve, with a difference of 18%. So there is a moderate superiority for the surgical sleeve in terms of the amount of weight loss. Uh, and they concluded that uh, ESG is an acceptable option for mild to moderate obese patients. How easy is it to learn uh, doing ESG? Uh, a single center study from also from Cornell looked at uh, the learning curve and they found that 38 patients, uh, 38 cases were required to achieve efficiency for this procedure and 50 cases were required to achieve mastery. I'd like to say though that advanced endoscopists with experience with endoscopic suturing might find it a little bit easier to learn during this procedure. Um, multiple studies have shown and proven that ESG is a relatively safe procedure to do. Mild adverse events such as abdominal pain and nausea are pretty common, but serious, serious adverse events are very uncommon, and about 1.5% or 1.3% of patients can have moderate or serious adverse events. This includes abdominal abscess, splenic laceration from the uh, needle um, uh, path, or sometimes um, fluid collection around the stomach, which might require percutaneous strain. But again, this is less than 2% of the cases. And uh, most recently, uh, the studies that came out within the last few years showed no fatal or major adverse events after ESG. Now let's let's talk about endoscopic resleeve, which is basically endoscopic revision for uh, surgical gastrectomy. 20% uh, of patients regain weight after surgical uh, gastrectomy, and um, endoscopic revision is feasible and successful in those patients to help them lose weight. Here's, uh, for example, one of my patients who had a surgical sleeve approximately five years ago and regained significant amount of weight recently. So we uh, performed uh, uh, endoscopic re-sleeve for this patient. As you see, the uh, stomach volume is quite uh, large. And so we start by marking the anterior and the posterior wall of the stomach using APC. And following that, uh, we use the uh, suturing uh, uh, device and we use the helix screw to obtain a full thickness application by grabbing the muscularis layer and pulling it towards the scope and then the needle drive will go through uh, the tissue and obtain the first bite and then we repeat this process on the greater curve and then the uh, posterior wall uh, multiple times uh, until we reduce the volume of the stomach it's important to note though that patients who had prior surgeries uh, they definitely have more scars and and uh, it can be harder to obtain full thickness uh, applications for those patients that's why picking your spot is crucial uh, to obtain uh, good results uh, for this population specifically And after the end of this procedure, you will have a reduced gastric volume and uh, um, sometimes a little shortened stomach as well. Uh, this patient, for example, lost approximately 50 pounds after uh, six months of the endoscopic resleeve. One study looked at this recently, nine centers, 82 patients who underwent endoscopic resleeve following initial uh, surgical sleeve and weight regain. And they found that uh, the total body weight loss was approximately 15.7% uh, at 12 mon months, which is pretty good for this population because you're just trying to get those patients back on track for the weight loss. Uh, they also found that the mean duration of the procedure was 48 minutes. And I'd like to mention that doing this procedure, um, we're very lucky, for example, at UCLA to have a team that is 
um, uh, technicians and nurses who are familiar with the endoscopic suturing and can definitely make this procedure more efficient and save time on the patient and the procedure unit by learning and knowing how to use those uh, techniques and this device. Another procedure that we have come uh, uh, familiar with is a transoral outlet reduction. Um, a lot of patients can regain weight after surgery, after gastric bypass, and uh, one of the reason is an enlarged pouch or enlarged outlet of the pouch. Uh, and some of those patients have dumping syndrome, which can be problematic. Uh, so we can do an endoscopic or transoral reduction of the outlet or the pouch itself by either using APC or ablation, ablation techniques, or by using uh, endoscopic suturing as well. And by doing this, we can help the patients uh, lose between between 9 to 12% of total body weight and also help them get back on track uh, for the weight loss. Another procedure is the Aspire Assist. Um, uh, Aspire Assist device is a large percutaneous gastrostomy tube that can be placed into the stomach, and then patients will uh, go ahead and siphon off part of the ingested meal uh, a few times a day, usually 20 to 30 minutes after after meals. And patients uh, in those studies love those de those devices because it definitely helps them to lose weight, about 49% uh, uh, excessive weight loss, and can be maintained for two years and also help them. Uh, Relearn how to uh, eat uh, during the day and uh, uh, and uh, really learn new habits that will be maintained for a longer time. Uh, over the next slides, I'll talk I'll talk briefly about small bowel interventions for weight loss. Uh, Transpyloric shuttle is one of the devices that uh, are uh, uh, studied for weight loss, and it's basically a space occupying device uh, that creates some sort of delayed gastric emptying, which uh, leads to about forty percent excessive weight loss at six months, and it was FDA approved in two thousand and sixteen. Duodenal muc mucosal resurfacing um, is um, uh, using a catheter to ablate the uh, duodenal mucosa. And it's been studied and used for type 2 diabetes mainly with obesity, and it helps with improving uh, glucose homeostasis. But only modest weight loss has been achieved with this procedure, so it's mainly for diabetes uh, with obesity. Duodenal jejunal sleeve is a sleeve that opens on both ways and creates a bypass technique uh, to also uh, help losing weight about 35% at 12 months and also improves um, uh, hemoglobin A1C. And finally, uh, dual path internal bypass. Um, in this procedure or this technique, it two uh, endoscopes uh, meet in the small bowel and then uh, magnets are deployed and those magnets meet together and then they fall after a few days uh, to create a bypass route. And this also helps achieving around 40% excessive weight loss after one year according to the uh, original study and also improves the glucose homeostasis. Um, so how important it is uh, to have uh, an endoscopic uh, program for weight loss? Um, um, I think it's uh, definitely uh, something that needs to be considered. And to answer that question, we just need to look at the prevalence of obesity in the United States and in the world, um, and you know, obesity-related complications as well, um, which uh, uh, you know, definitely we need more reliable treatments and more um, uh, options for weight loss. And who is the uh, ideal candidate? Candidate. Um, basically, patients with BMI between 30 and low 40s, 44, 45, uh, are good candidates for endoscopic interventions uh, for weight loss. Uh, patients who are not good surgical candidates or patients who require a bridge to surgery, for example, patients who uh, are awaiting transplant um, or sometimes patients who need uh, knee the replacement but they, their BMI is quite high, uh, we can use endoscopic options as a bridge to get them safely to surgery. Um, and also sometimes early intervention for younger patients early on in their life to prevent long-term complications of obesity. And it's always important to remember that multidisciplinary approach is needed uh, for weight loss. Uh, and a team of provider, providers um, is definitely needed. And that includes endocrinologists, dietitians, healthcare coaches, psychologists, GI, advanced endoscopists, and surgeon to work all together. So in conclusion, um, there is a significant gap in the management of obesity, but multidisciplinary approach is needed to help patients in this journey to achieve weight loss and maintain uh, the, uh, uh, the outcomes. Uh, multiple endoscopic options are available and some of them are ready for prime time. Endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty is uh, a very promising procedure that is here and uh, it has been shown to be effective and safe uh, on multiple uh, recent studies.
and more endoscopic options are being developed uh, to provide reliable, reliable options for patients with obesity and metabolic syndrome for weight loss. And thank you everybody for attending.